once again, guys, welcome to Elevate. Happy you're here tonight. And you know what I just want to say? Usually I have a joke or I have something to tell. You guys know I'm funny. I like to tell jokes. But tonight I just want to tell you guys, God is amazing. He is so amazing. He is so wonderful. And I'm just blown away by him. And I can tell you this, I'm, I'm 26 years old. And I've known God for, you know, I don't know how long now. It's pr probably, you know, some, some sort of years. I'm joking. But I've known God for a while, and I can tell you that, you know, so many things in life get more boring. You know, you get used to different things, you get used to it. But the further that you go on your walk with God, he gets more amazing. And it's like every single day, every single week, it's just awesome. And so I'm just excited to talk about him tonight. Amen? I'm excited to talk about it, and I'm excited for us to discover a new facet of what he's trying to say, of who he is. And there's so many different parts of who God is, because sometimes God is described in the Bible as gentle, and other times he's described as a mighty warrior. Sometimes he's our comforter, and sometimes he's, he's one who fights for us. You see, God has so many facets to him, so many parts of him, that it just blows me away. You know, you see me, and it's like, okay, it's Dawn, you know, she talks, she's a mother, she's this, but God has so many parts to him, so many facets to who he is, it's amazing. And so tonight, I'm gonna try to just talk about just one, everybody say one, just one facet, because I can't do it all in one night or in a year, but we'll talk about just one, and we're gonna go to John 10, 11, if you have your Bible with you, if not, it'll be on the screen. It says this, I am the good shepherd, everybody say good shepherd, good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Now for those of you you know, who are in the room, I'm sure you know what a shepherd is, right? Alan, no. <laughs> okay, Alan didn't go to kindergarten. I am the good shepherd. The shepherd is what? The shepherd is someone who watches over sheep. Am I right? Everybody say yes. This isn't a trick question. Yes. The shepherd is somebody who watches over the sheep. Now, the thing about the shepherd is this. The shepherd isn't just some guy who just, you know, he goes and he watches the sheep and then he goes home and he this. The shepherd lives with the sheep, watches the sheep, protects the sheep. It even says in this verse, who lays down their life for the sheep. And we have a good shepherd named Jesus Christ who does the same for us. Just like this verse says, he's the, the good shepherd, the good shepherd lays down his life. That is Jesus Christ for you and me. So what does that mean? That means the Bible is calling you and me, baby, sheep. Turn to your neighbor and say, Bleh. yeah. The Bible's calling us sheep. Now, when I was doing some research, research, I was researching, and I found that sheep are mentioned in the Bible 200 times. Now, when you hear that something's mentioned in the Bible 200 times, it's like, wow, that must be pretty important, right? I would think. Just a side note, dogs were mentioned in the Bible 44 times. Cats, zero. Now, in case you're talking about lions, you know, but the Bible also says that Satan, you know, goes around like a lion and tries to devour people, so dog person. Anyway, so sheep are mentioned 200 times. We would think, oh, pat myself on the back. I'm a sheep. I'm mentioned in the Bible 200 times, but the problem is it's not necessarily the greatest thing to be known as a sheep because sheep are said to be by most a really dumb animal. Ooh. A really not so smart, not not the brightest, not, you know, the elephant, I think they're smart, of the animal kingdom. A sheep is known to be somebody who's not that smart. And 200 times in the Bible, sheep are mentioned, and you are mentioned to be sheep in one of them. Uh-oh. Whoa, 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 what is this saying? You're calling me dumb, Don? Well, I just, the Bible says it. No, but what I'm saying is, let's, let's, let's just be real for a second here. And let's look at it how it is, and, you know, maybe we are like sheep. Maybe we can learn a little bit from this Bible verse. But before I go into it, I want to tell you, even though you may be like a sheep, that means you've got a good shepherd, right? That means you've got a good shepherd. But let's take a look at how we can be like sheep. Are you ready? Okay. The first way is this, if you're taking notes. Number one, sheep get lost. Sheep get lost. <laughs> Preach. Sheep are not very good with directions. They don't really, you know, they could get lost real easy. They're out in the field, and then suddenly they're falling off a cliff. I mean, they just, they get lost. Is anyone here bad with directions? Okay, wow, there's a lot of people. I don't know how you found your way here tonight, but praise God. 
Uh, yeah. So you know what? I'm one of those people that's really bad with directions, and poor Pastor Jordan, my awesome husband, will go on trips together, and he's like, hey, just take the phone and look at the GPS. Take the phone and look. Oh, oh, okay. I think I can do it. Take the phone and look at it. So the GPS is like saying where to go, turn left here, turn right here. And, you know, if something happens where he didn't hear what it says, he's like, hey, Don, can you tell me what to do? I'm like, uh, I mean, I'm looking at it. I'm tapping it. I'm flicking it. Uh, go right, go right, go right. Goes right completely the wrong way. 16 minutes added to the trip. Why? Because of terrible directions. I mean, if you say this is north, this is south, it's Spanish to me. I don't know what you're saying. How do I, how do I Google it? But even when I GPS it, I have problems. Well, I'm a sheep. I'm like sheep. Sheeps are bad at directions. Dawns are bad at directions. Ugh. But maybe you're not bad at directions, you know. Maybe you're like a scavenger like Jordan. And, you know, most of the time we end up switching spots. He gets so frustrated. He's like, you, know, you just drive. I'll direct you. Okay. But let's take a look at what the Bible has to say about sheep and directions and us. In Isaiah 53, 6, it says, All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's paths to follow our own, and yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. So what is this saying? Every single one of us in this room, whether it's now, whether it's another time in our lives, have strayed away from God, our amazing Father, just like sheep tend to stray away. We all have had our moments. Maybe it's not directionally, and you're going north, and God's going south, and it's one of those. But spiritually... We all have our moments where we begin to stray when we try to do things our own way. You guys have probably been there before. I mean, you, you, suddenly you're like, you know, I'm just going to go over here for a little bit. And if I don't spend time with God today or tomorrow, it's not going to be that big of a deal. And suddenly you get lost for just a little bit. You get away from the shepherd for just a little bit. And suddenly you've got this fear coming on, this anxiety coming on. You think that you can get away from him for a bit, but before you know it, you're lost. Sheep get lost. Why? Because sheep are dumb. You'd think they'd learn to stick with the shepherd, right? Mm. Let's take a look at the second way that we can be like sheep. Number two, they are defenseless. <laughs> They're defenseless. Most animals have claws, right? They've got teeth. They've got tusks. We have guns. Sorry. Okay. We're, sorry. It's, uh, Jeremy, never do that again. For those of you who didn't see, Jeremy flexed and pointed at his muscles and said, these guns. No, boo him, boo him, boo him, boo him. Oh my gosh, you guys. Most animals have something that they can protect themselves with. Tusks, talons, teeth, whatever. What does a sheep have? Yes, fluff. I actually brought with me, Grace, can you bring this up for me? My daughter, Summer, is amazing, but she has this stuffed animal. And what it is, is it's a, it's a sheep or a lamb. It's one of those things. And when I was thinking about this and I was talking about how sheep are defenseless, this is what has been in my mind. Just a ball of fluff. I mean, you just want to squeeze it. You just want to love it. It's fluffy. It's wonderful. It's awesome. But what is this thing going to do when a wolf's coming? Bah, bah. Don't hurt me. I'm cute. Bah, bah, bah. I mean, what's it supposed to do? What's going to happen? It's going to be dead in a moment. Why? Because sheep are defenseless. They could try to knock you over with their fluff, but it's not going to do anything. They're defenseless. Can I tell you guys something? We are defenseless in the spirit. Because the Bible says that we have an enemy that tries to come and steal, kill, and destroy from us, that prowls around like a hungry lion, cat, tries to come and prowl and try to get at us. And we're like sheep. We've got nothing to defend ourselves by ourselves. What are we going to do? The enemy tries to come at us. Get away from me. If you don't get away, I'm going to go in my room and get away from you. And he's like, okay, I'll come in there. Most people don't like to talk about the enemy or like to talk about demonic things, but it's the reality. We have an amazing God, but there's also an amazing, not an amazing, a terrible enemy that tries to come against us. And we need to know that we are defenseless to him without our good shepherd, Jesus Christ, right? We're defenseless. We're a sheep that's just fluffing around, fluffing around. We gotta know our place, but thank God we have Jesus, amen? Amen. Now, the third way, the third way that we can be like sheep is they are stubborn. Stubborn. Turn to your neighbor and say, she's talking to you. Okay. All right. All right. Now, what you, what you didn't know is I was actually taking a secret poll on you, and I was watching, and I was proving my point that some of you are indeed very stubborn because you didn't even turn to your left or your right. 
<laughs> Layla. <laughs> I told you what to do, and you're just like, eh. I'm going to do my own thing. They're stubborn. They're stubborn. They try to do things their own way. I was reading about sheep, and I thought this was just so funny. Sad, but funny. They would Sheep often do this thing where they get caught in between two rocks, okay? <laughs> Stop laughing. They get caught in between two rocks, and they're trying to go forward, and they're trying to push forward, and they get wedged in between. Well, if they would just back their big fluffy butts up, they would be able to get out. But instead, they just keep pushing and pushing and pushing and going one way and going one way and going one way. Well, what happens? Because they're just trying to go their own way, and they're stubborn, they get further caught and caught and caught and caught. But pretty soon, they're just wedged in the ball of fluff in between two rocks. Now, that reminds me of a lot of us. You may not be outside getting wedged between two rocks. If you are, I don't know what to say. But a lot of us, we do the same thing over and over and over and over again, expecting different results. We keep doing the same lifestyle, hanging out with the same people, living the same way and expecting things to suddenly be different. Well, I don't have to follow Jesus all the way. I'll just do it some of the way and, and it'll be fine. But you keep going and going and going, and the fear is still saying, and the anxiety is still saying. And the truth is, if you would back up and stop being stubborn and trying to do it your own way, you might be able to find that the good shepherd is there to help you and to lead you. But we get stubborn. You know, you see people post things on Facebook. Facebook is the worst invention ever. I'm sorry. But you see people post things on Facebook, or people say things, and they're like, you know what? I just am always attracting the wrong men to me. No matter what I do, I just keep getting all the bad boys. Well, honey, listen, the pictures you're posting are pretty much like bait for the bad boys. The places you're going is bait for the bad boys. Or I hear, you know, people, I'm, I'm just broke. I'm broke all the time. I'm just, I'm broke all the time. Hey, you want to go to the mall? I need some retail therapy. I'm like, oh, man. Now, this isn't to make anybody feel bad. What I'm saying is we can be stubborn. We can get caught in our own ways, and we all have our different areas of things that we get caught up in. But the point is, we don't want to be stubborn sheep. We want to back up and follow the shepherd. Amen? Amen. The last thing that I'm going to talk about sheep is they're filthy. They're filthy. You know, a lot of us, when we think about sheep, we think of the stuffed animal. We think about little Bo Peep and her wonderful fluffy sheep. But f sheep stank, okay? Okay. The ones that you see that, that look good, they've been power washed probably. I mean, they're, they're terrible, they stink, and they just have this odor about them. You know, I remember when I went to uh, the Cuyahoga County Fairgrounds before, you got to the sheep pens and it's like, oh my gosh, these things stink. You guys know what I'm talking about? Now, just like sheep stink, we stink in the spirit. We stink, we don't realize to us, it's not that big of a deal, but our sin, our things that we're holding on to in our lives are so stinky and repulsive and just smelly in the spirit. And it just is lingering on us and it's wearing on us and it becomes heavy. You know, something interesting about sheep is this, is that if sheep get too much dirt or filth or whatever on their coat and it becomes too heavy, or they get too much of their coat that becomes too big and they're carrying too much, they get to the place where they can't even move and they literally fall on their backs in complete stupidity. I'm being serious. They get so much filth on them. They get so heavy. They get all this stuff on them. They're stinky. They're gross. They have too much wool, and they just lay on their backs. Don't believe me? I have a video. Do you want to see it? I'm showing it anyway. Go ahead, Sarah. Put that video up here. Uh, Daddy can, I don't want to touch it because it gets me hurt. Oh sheep, you're so stupid. How did you get like that? <laughs> oh sheep, you're so stupid. So what happened? Well, he got too big. I mean, did you see him? Wow. He had too much fluff. He had too much filth on him. And when he fell over, he couldn't get back up. 
He couldn't get back up on his own. He needed somebody to come help him. Too filthy, too heavy. You know, a lot of us, guys, we've been trying to do stuff on our own, but a sheep can't shave itself. A sheep can't clean itself. A sheep needs a shepherd to be able to step in and get the filth off, get the wool off, do something amazing with that wool. Because why? Because that's a good shepherd. And that's what we need in our lives. And it's time we stop walking around like fluffy, fat sheep that at any moment will fall over and we can't pull ourselves out of it. We don't need to live that way because we've got a good shepherd. That when we call his name, here he comes running. And he won't call us stupid. He'll come and love on us when he picks us back up. Now, I didn't spend all this time to beat you up, okay? Because a lot of you are like, I came to Elevate and I was called filthy. And I mean, I was, I was, I was told that I, I'm filthy, that I'm dumb, that I'm this, that I'm that. I told you all of these things to get you to realize that we all aren't as great as we think we are. To get a little bit of perspective tonight that, that maybe it's okay if we're the sheep when we have an amazing shepherd to focus on. That it's okay that, that, that I have this filthiness, that I have this part about me because I've got a good shepherd that would clean me, that will clean me, that has cleaned me. And so not only do I want to focus on, hey, this is all of the things that we have that are in our lives that make us like sheep, but I want to tell you about the shepherd now. I want to tell you about how awesome the shepherd is. Because you've got these things in your life, yes, but not only do you have these things in your life and you go home and you cry, no. Now you know that you need a shepherd. You may be like sheep, but sheep have an amazing shepherd, and his name is Jesus Christ. Let me tell you a couple things about your shepherd. These are just a couple of them. There's so many more we could go into, but the first one is this. Your shepherd guides. Everybody say guides. Guides. <laughs> We're going to look at John 10, verse 3 to 4. It says this, the gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. What is this saying? That God is an amazing shepherd to us in the way of this, that God literally makes a way for us. And not only does he make a way for us and he doesn't just release us to just go, that he actually goes before us and guides us in every step and every area of our lives because he's a good shepherd. He doesn't just open and say, go, have fun, do life. He says, hey, if you follow me, I will show you the way to life everlasting. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the way. He is the one to follow. He is the one to look to, and he's our good shepherd that wants to lead us. That's a pretty amazing thing, that he guides us. He guides us in every area of our lives, just like a good shepherd does to sheep. I mean, you watch videos about sheep, and when they hear their shepherd, they come running. It's awesome. Why? Because they know that he's going to lead them, that he's going to take them and show them the way to go. One of the things that we need to be able to do, though, is that this verse says is that the sheep know and hear his voice, and they follow it, right? Well, we need to learn to be able to listen to our shepherd. A lot of us, we, maybe we believe God's our shepherd, we believe Jesus is our shepherd, but we're not listening to his voice. We're not listening to what he's saying over our lives. And I hear people say all the time, well, I don't really understand the voice of God. I don't really know the voice of God. I don't know how to hear from him. But I want to tell you tonight just simplicity that, that God speaks in a lot of different ways. You don't have to hear an audible voice, I am your shepherd, come and thus follow me. It doesn't work that way a lot of the times. Very few times in history. There's a lot of different ways that he talks. He talks through circumstances. He talks through other people that are hearing from him. He talks through the Bible. He talks through the inner man, that inner part of you that's connected with him. Dreams, just different circumstances, things that happen in our lives. He, he's trying to speak to us if we would listen and follow. One of the things that happened to me recently, and it was just a time in my life, it was literally like a week ago that this happened, is I was just kind of having a rough day. Anybody have one of those? Yeah. Good. Some honest people. Having a rough day. And on this day, I just wasn't feeling good, battling some health problems and just different things that were going on. And anyway, I'm just living life, doing things, being a mom, having an ordinary day. And I'm just out doing my thing. And all of a sudden, I'm just, I'm playing with my daughter outside with her little baby pool. And I like to spray her with a hose. It's, you know, it's cute. So we're out there, we're spraying. And all of a sudden, when I'm spraying, I see this rainbow come off of the water. Now, a lot of you are like, well, that's science because, you know, the light shines and then there's the water particles and it creates a rainbow. 
Well, for me, when I saw this, I know what the, what the Bible says about rainbows, and then it's a promise of God and just of who he is. And I was like, wow, God, thanks for showing me that. You know what I said? I prayed right then and there. I said, God, I think it would be awesome if I saw three rainbows today. And then I kept going doing my own thing. Well, I go in my car, and I go somewhere, and I look down on my hand, and there's somehow shining from somewhere, there's this little rainbow of a light on my hand. And I look down, and I go, cool, God. How about one more? And I'm out driving, and I'm out traveling around, and suddenly me and my husband are in the car, and off to the right, the way the light just reflects off of a sign, boom, rainbow. That's three. Now, for some of you, you're like, okay, well, this is all coincidence, whatever. But you know what? I just believe that God's in the middle of everything. I believe that he hears us. He's a shepherd that longs to be with us. And when we ask him to show up, he shows up. Maybe not in the ways that we would expect him to or the ways that you've heard about, but he comes. That's the way that God came and met with me personally or at least made me aware of his presence. And it was cool for me, and it helped me to remember his promises and who we are, but we have to listen. We have to listen. We have to look. We have to be able to see and believe, I have a shepherd that wants to speak to me. I have a shepherd that wants to speak and wants me to follow his voice. Why? Because he's good. He's awesome. He already proved it because he laid his life down for us. Now it's time we listen. You know, the closer that you get to God and the more that you open yourself up and you just ask him and he reveals himself and you recognize it, you'll learn to recognize his voice and his person in different areas of your life. You know, when I go to a store, I can find Jordan by either his voice or by his cough. If he, he'll be in a different aisle and I'll be trying to call him on his cell phone and he's not answering because he just doesn't look at his phone much, it's okay. So I'm calling him, I'm calling, I can't hear him. But if I hear a cough, I mean, how many other people are in the store? You hear a cough, it doesn't matter. But I hear his, and I'm like, Jordan, there he is. I follow, I, I know him. Why? Because I've been around him. I've listened to his voice. I know him. I've been married to him. And the closer that I get to him and the more that I listen to him, I know him better. And it's the same with God. The closer I get to God, the more I get around him, the more time I spend with him, the more I get in his word and I learn about his character and who he is, I will recognize his voice and his hand in different situations, which is a really cool thing. The second thing that we're going to talk about tonight is that he provides. Everybody say provides. Provides. Say it. Provides. Good. Awesome. We're looking at Psalm 23, 1 to 3. It says this, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside quiet waters, and he refreshes my soul. You know, something interesting about sheep is that they don't lie down that often. They don't lie down. Hopefully, it's because they often can't get up. <laughs> but they don't lie down that often. Why? Well, because they need to be fed. They have the whole feeding thing. They're thirsty. They have, to get a, they have to go different places. They're worried about being safe. They have to get along with each other. And then if all of these different things are right, then they can lie down. Well, what is this saying? It says that he makes me lie down in green pastures. That shepherd is so good that the hunger is fulfilled, the thirst is fulfilled, the unity with other brothers and sisters is fulfilled, the safety is fulfilled in that good shepherd that the sheep is actually safe and comfortable in lying down. You know, you have a shepherd that's so good in your own life, Jesus Christ, that you can lie down in situations that don't make sense. You can be filled in your soul in situations that don't make sense. Why? Because he's a good shepherd and you can trust that he's going to lead you into the right places. Because of him, we can rest and we can be comfortable. It also says that he leads me beside quiet waters. Notice it doesn't say rushing waters. He leads me beside quiet waters. He takes me to green pastures, just the most wonderful, luxurious place where I can lie down and I can be comfortable, but also to quiet waters. Why? Because if sheep get into rushing waters, they will fall in and float away. Seriously, they'll fall in and they'll just float down the stream and they can't get off. They get all fluffy and wet. And they're caught up. Well, the shepherd isn't going to lead you somewhere that's not going to be safe for you. He's only going to lead you places that are, that are going to fulfill you and bring restoration to your soul because he's good and he cares about his sheep. And also he refreshes your soul. There's a way that a shepherd, our, our shepherd Jesus, knows how to fill us like no one else can. He can take us and provide for us in places 
And he could take us to different areas in the ways that just we need in that moment. Why? Because he's good. The last one is protects. Everybody say protects. Protects. In Psalm 23, 4 to 6, it says this. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies and you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows and surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. Now, a lot of this is hard when we're reading stuff like this because we don't really understand what's going on with shepherds. We don't really understand the language of the time. When it's talking about your rod and your staff, they comfort me. That's also in the song Reckless Love that we sing about. Or isn't it in that one? Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Yeah. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. It's really interesting because the rod was actually a weapon that the shepherd would use to beat off things that would try to come at the sheep wolves, mountain lions, whatever, they would use the rod. And then the staff is something that they had that would bring them into comfort, that would bring the sheep into comfort. God's got it all, guys. He's got provision. He's got protection. He's got refreshing for your soul. He knows just how to take care of us stupid old sheep. He knows what's right for us. He knows what's best for us. He knows how to clean us up and put us back together again and lead us to the best places that are good for us. He knows because he's a good God. He's an awesome God. Another thing that it talks about here is you anoint my head with oil. One of the things that would happen to sheep is that they would just get these bugs. A lot, Maybe you guys have heard this before. They would get these bugs that like flies and just different things that would start to get into their ears and they would try to go into their eyes and they would just be swarming around them. And pretty soon if they didn't have anything done to them, they would get in their brain and cause the sheep to go crazy where they would start beating their head on walls and different things like that. Because these sheep got, or these, not the sheep, the flies and the different bugs got into their brain and messed them up. So that's why the shepherd would anoint with oil to protect them from the bugs. To protect them from the different things that were coming your way. There's so many things that we're all dealing with, different things that are trying to come at us that will get in our mind and mess us up and make us go crazy, different situations we're dealing with. But the good shepherd is here saying, I will protect you from the top of your head to the bottom of your souls. Would you just stay still and let me pour my oil on you? And that's what God does for us. Another thing that I was reading, this is a little bit graphic and it's really disgusting, but I, you know, it's interesting. One of the things that was happening overseas in England is there would be these sheep and these lambs that flocks of ravens. Ravens used to be, you know, um, like a, a superstitious animal for them, and they people would just kill off these ravens and different things. Ravens are like a big black bird, okay? And so they would just have them superstitious, but not that that long ago. They put ravens on like a protection list. Well, what is happening is that these ravens are coming in flocks and going after the sheep, going for their eyes, pecking out their eyeballs, and leaving them blind and bloodied. So they come from above, and suddenly they'll come and they'll swarm a newborn, a lamb, they'll come and swarm a sheep, and they'll just come because they can't get through their skin, so they go for their eyes. And they go and they swarm and they start pecking and pecking and pecking. And farmers will go outside and find their sheep wandering around with no eyes, just blood pouring down. Sounds like something out of a horror movie, doesn't it? It's terrible. The sheep are defenseless. What are they to do without their shepherd? Now, when the shepherd's around, it doesn't happen. They don't come close. But as soon as they get away from the shepherd, as soon as they are somewhere else, even if they're in another building that you would think would protect them, these things find a way in and just boom, they come for the eyes. And they poke them out and they get them. You know, the enemy is always looking for a way, a perfect time to come in and get right at you to steal the way that you see things, to steal your perspective, to steal what God wants to do in your life. And without the shepherd there, there's no protection. But with him, those things don't even stand a chance. They don't stand a chance. Those things that you fear, those things that you're worried about with the good shepherd, they won't even come around. They're too afraid because the shepherd has all the power. Amen? Amen. Worship team, you can start coming up. So why do we talk about all this tonight? Why is all this going on? It's just been on my heart to just try to let you know that God is just a good shepherd. He's an awesome shepherd. He's a God that loves us and cares for us. He's with us. He's for us. 
In that song, we talk about that we're singing with reckless love that he literally leaves the 99 for the one. What does that mean? It's talking about sheep. It's talking about how a good shepherd, even if there's 99 safe sheep and one runs off, that he'll run off to go get the one just to keep the one shape safe. Why? Because every single sheep is important to him, is near to his heart, is close to his heart. And I just believe tonight that it's important for us to get, no matter how messed up we are, no matter how many things, we're, we're filthy, we're dirty, we've got all these different things going on. God's a good shepherd. He's a good shepherd that's there for us, that loves us, that cares for us. He can protect us in the craziest of circumstance, even when things just seem like they're coming from all directions. He knows just what to do. And it's not the pressure isn't on the, the sheep to be able to direct themselves or to keep themselves protected. It's all on the shepherd. The sheep don't have to worry. They don't have to get frustrated. It's the shepherd's job. And tonight I want to tell you to stop trying to do it yourself. Try, stop trying to figure it out. Stop trying to clean yourself. Stop trying to guide yourself, lead yourself, do things your own way. It's time to just trust the shepherd. Let him deal with it because he knows the way. He knows the way. So with every eye closed and every head bowed, I want to ask two different questions, and the first is this. Maybe the first is you've never heard about this amazing shepherd that literally just, Jesus, he's there for us. He loves us. He cares for us. He would do anything to protect us. He would do anything to pull us out of darkness, anything to put us in a place of rest and peace. And he's here for you tonight, and he wants to come be a part of your life. The Bible says that we have all sinned and fallen short of God's glory. What does that mean? We all make mistakes. We all can be messed up. But God is so good in his mercy that he sent his son Jesus, our good shepherd, to die for us and make a way where there was no way so that we can have an amazing life now in his presence and spend eternity with him. And if you've never heard it before and you've never made the decision to follow Jesus, I want to tell you that here, he's here tonight. He's here tonight and he wants to meet with you. He wants to be with you in your life. He would leave the 99, every single other one to come just for you because he's a good shepherd. And you're maybe, maybe this, this whole God thing isn't for me. Maybe this isn't for me. It is for you because you're a son or you're a daughter of God. So if you've never made the decision to follow Jesus Christ before, but you want the shepherd to lead your life and you know you're in need of a savior, I'm just gonna ask you to raise your hand when I count to three. Don't worry about the person to the left or the right. This is for those who have never said this before. I'm not going to call you up. I just want to pray with you. If that's you, if you say, I need a shepherd in my life. I'm a lost sheep. Would you raise your hand on the count of three? One, two, three. Go ahead and raise your hand. I see your hands. I see your hands. I see your hands. Awesome. You all can put your hands down. Now, what I want you to do is don't worry about anybody next to you. I just want you to repeat this prayer after me and mean it with every single ounce of your heart. And for those of you who have said this prayer before, join in with me because there's a lot of people who've raised their hands tonight. Let's join in support of them. Would you just repeat after me? Dear Jesus, I admit 